Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. Now, today, as y'all saw this morning, I tweeted that Unreal Engine 5.2 is officially out. No more previews or anything like that. Now, as y'all know, I've been using 5.2 for a while. Actually, I'm using 5.3 now, which is, I think, is going to be a lot bigger than this. But with that being said, right now, what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview on what is new with Unreal Engine 5.2. All right, so a little bit of TLDR right now. What's new? We have the procedural content generation that I make tutorials about. I think I made two tutorials. I'll put the link in the description below in the top left corner of this video. Procedural content generation is another tool that we can use to kind of create our environment. I really, I am starting to actually really like it. And the next one is Substrate. Again, I made a video about this already, so go check it out. It's pretty much going to be the new material system that you can enable via a plugin. Again, though, just a reminder, make a copy if you're gonna try Substrate because it's gonna change all the materials in your project to Substrate even though you don't want them to. It's gonna force it. So so scrolling down right here, I'm gonna skip a lot of this stuff. Um, we have the machine learning deformer sample that you can download, uh, which is pretty interesting. If you wanna download that, you can go ahead and check it out. There's a sample project. We're gonna take a look at it after this video. This is more like an overview. For rendering wise, we got a couple of Nanite and Lumen and path tracing improvements. I know I made a video about this one already comparing it from uh, 5.1 to 5.2. So as you can see, you're gonna get a little bit of GI occlusion on characters, you know, get a little bit of shadows in the nose area and things like that. All right, so here we go. Two-sided foliage support in hardware ray tracing, hit lighting. So that's great news. Again, if you're using hardware ray tracing, which I do all the time and I'm never I'm rendering in Lumen. Uh, here's the substrate experimental again. They have a pretty good video on this on their YouTube channel. It's pretty complex, um, and like I said in my previous videos, I think this is going to help us make metahumans look better, especially in the eyes and the teeth and the skin. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool stuff. I can't wait to get more documentations on that, on how to get it working with a metahuman. Uh, so scroll down. Path Tracer right now, biggest thing with Path Tracer is that spline meshes are now supported with Path Tracing. I use a lot of spline meshes for my walls, for my roads, so for fences and things like that. So now... I can have spline meshes in path trace mode, which is very, very good. Uh, you can also run path tracing in real time now, in runtime if you want to. They actually have a new path tracing blueprint node. If you want to do that, um, you can. Here's actually another good one. They improve the ray tracing shadows on rectangular lights and lights with shapes, right, with source sizes. So like I said in my lighting course, the shadow from a rec light doesn't really reflect or show up correctly in the shadow area as uh, so you can see right here on the left side it just that doesn't look right it shouldn't look like that but now with the 5.2 version it should be reflecting a little bit better it's not just a harsh shadow it shouldn't be casting that long of a shadow on the left but now on the right it just looks more natural if you will so go ahead and try that out so the ray trace shadow for uh rec lights for sure with with pretty much lights with sources that you can increase and decrease that is now showing up properly a lot better i would say all uh, right here there is a subsurface scattering improvement there is a node now for path tracer only for subsurface medium i haven't tested this out but i want to test this out obviously on a meta human uh, so you see so right here we improved rough surface rendering for human skin so you have this new node in there okay so retargeting wise it looks like they did add a new option there for when you're retargeting two skeleton uh systems that are very similar pretty much the same exact thing you can now map all exact names on there as so you can see right here so if your target chain is root and a source chain is root also you know before you would just go ahead and automatically retarget that but now you can auto map chains with exact on it which is good um, that gives you pretty much, hopefully, like automated retargeting if you have two similar skeletons in your scene. And another cool thing with the actual retargeting, I don't remember seeing this before, so this is probably new. There's now a add skeleton in the retargeting window. Before, I would have to go to Windows Details and add the compatible skeleton in there, but it looks like now you can just go ahead and add this compatible skeleton in this window, which is the retargeting window. So that kind of makes things a little bit faster. All right, so here is the Machine Learner Deformer Sample Project like I talked about right there. Uh, go ahead and download that. I'm going to play around with that a little bit. All right, so they have the Machine Learning Clot Simulation improvements as well, as you can see right here. I mean, that's looking pretty darn good already, but it looks like they're just improving it more and more. And again, they have the new Chaos Flash simulation, which I'm going to be testing out. Uh, in this example right here, they're showing you the uh, Chaos Flash example on the tires. 
Now, I really want to know, as y'all know, I, I do a lot of car stuff now. I want to know how easy it is uh, to use. I haven't messed around with it yet. I'm still waiting for the documentation. But, yeah, I'm definitely curious to know how that's going to work out. As far as I know, I think I read somewhere that it is not runtime. You have to, like, cache it. So we're going to be checking that out, see what that's all about. They have this starfish simulation in there. I mean, this is cool. But yeah, this right here is going to add so much more realism to your simulations or your animations. Because your cars are actually, like, interacting with the environment, which is super cool. Again, we're going to have to mess around with that. And additionally, I think I already mentioned this before, you can cache your fluid simulations now. So you can cache it and then put it in a sequencer to replay, play them back. So that's kind of good. Actually, you see right here, I think I made a tutorial about this already. If not, I'm probably going to do it. And they also have this decal renderer that I know Dylan Brown already is playing around with, which looks pretty cool. But pretty much what this is, is, is similar to like a decal in Unreal Engine, but you can actually connect it to a Niagara. So if I press play right now, you can see that you're spawning multiple decals. You check out Dylan Brown, he's already messing around with that. So here you go, the Niagara sim caching, where you talked about that. So you have an explosion, you can now cache it and sequencer. It's really, it's a good idea because now you can actually time your explosions, right? You know, when you have a person walking and then you want the explosions right behind them, you can time it better if you cache it. So if you want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below if I haven't done one already. Okay, so the next thing is the shader compilation improvements. It says here that they implemented the new shader preprocessor that offers two times speed in shader preprocessing. This is enabled by default. So hopefully our shading compilation will be a little bit faster. We'll have to see about that. I haven't tried that out yet. With that being said, that's all I got for y'all right now. Again, we're going to be digging in a little bit more deeper, but this is more just like a TLDR overview on what's new in Unreal Engine 5.2.